Next up, Meghan Markle has stated recently in an interview that was listened to by nine people that she feels that movies like Austin Powers and Kill Bill present caricatures of women of Asian descent as over-sexualized, regressive. She added that the toxic stereotyping of women in Asian descent doesn't just end once the credits roll. Does Moni Markle have a point? Or is this just a woke Z-list actress making a mountain out of a molehill to sell another book or make another Netflix program? To discuss this, I am joined in the studio by award-winning journalist Andy No. Thank you, Andy, so much for joining us. Of course. Thanks for having me here. OK, talk me through this one. So the title of the episode is The Demystification of the Dragon Lady, which sounds very philosophical and intellectual. But if you listen to just a few minutes of it, the issue that Megan raises in so-called stereotypes in Hollywood of East Asian or Oriental women is she brings up Austin Powers. Uh, the third film in the series that came out in 2002 had a running gag from previous films, actually, where the names of, uh, of, of two women in this particular case is, uh, sounds like something very sexual, and the two women here happen to be Japanese girls. Um, the point, I think, of that scene is that it's mocking the caricature. And, uh, and now, 20 years later, Megan thinks that she's being philosophical by raising, well, these are caricatures and it's offensive. Well, that was actually the point. And, you know, for her, she brought on the guest of Margaret Cho to discuss the, the alleged hypersexualization of East Asian or Oriental women. And Margaret Cho is a Korean American comedian who, for decades, the backbone of her public persona and her comedy is the fact that she's extremely hypersexualized and that she makes jokes about tropes about East Asian people and her Korean family. So the whole thing is typically what you expect um, uh, a lot of contradictions and. Uh, I guess, uh, irony uh, that Megan doesn't appear to see in front of her. She's never one to avoid jumping on a bandwagon, Megan, is she? So do you think we're witnessing in America, which is never reported by CNN or any of the MSNBC or anything like that, uh, 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 systemic racial attacks on Asian people, East Asian people. Do you think Megan is just jumping on the bandwagon of going, now I've got to try and get my Asian brothers and sisters on board? Or is she genuinely concerned? Uh, she is jumping on a bandwagon, obviously. She brought up, actually, um, crimes against Asian Americans at one point, but I think um, completely misinformed the audience. So she brought up the case of uh, the shootings of um, the Asian sex balls in Atlanta in March of last year. Now, that mass shooting, which there were eight people who were murdered, six of whom were of East Asian Oriental background, um, the media ran with the narrative that this was an extension of um, anti-Asian bigotry discrimination from COVID, from Trump's rhetoric, and it started the campaign hashtag Stop Asian Hate. Um, well, very quickly it emerged that there was no evidence that the suspect now convicted gunman uh, had actually targeted these spas because of racial animus. In fact, based on what he said and all the evidence that's been known, is that he had a sex addiction and viewed these um, massage parlors that also had is accused of having uh, performing illegal sex services. That, that's why he targeted them. And uh, in one of the two counties where the prosecutors have successfully brought convictions against him, the district attorney there in Cherokee County, Georgia, did say that there was no evidence of racial animus. But for, even with all this known, Megan brought this up as somehow squeezing it into this, this uh, podcast discussion about anti-Asian hate or discrimination. And it doesn't fit. And what's unfortunate is that one of the other guests on the show is Lisa Ling, is an Asian, a very successful Asian-American journalist, and there was no pushback um, by this journalist on uh, misinformation. And, you know, we, it's also been reported that Megan's hired a, a fact-checker for her podcast series, and uh, I would just say apparently um, that person's not, well. not correct. Um, but 